views and opinions expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of BronxNet or the program underwriters. Hola everyone, welcome to Open, the one and only show bringing the best of the Bronx, New York and the world straight to you. I'm Rina Valentin, your host of Café con Leche every Friday. Here's what's coming up in today's show. Leading things off, we'll hear about Cirque Studios fashion show dedicated to bringing awareness to cancer. And after that, we'll learn about the Dance Bridge Workshop and the different activities used to help students create and connect through dance. Then we get the scoop behind the annual New York Latino Film Festival and the different films lined up for this year's event. Next, we'll cook up some summer tasty dishes with Chef Roosevelt Caesar and we'll discuss his catering company, Savory Bites. And later on in the show, Bobby C. brings us an up to date with the latest headlines in the world of sports. And finally, this week's Open Artist Spotlight features synth pop duo Group 5 Alive who will perform their new single. So sit back y preparate. All this and more is headed your way because now we are officially open. to open everyone i'm rina valentin your host of cafe con leche for the next hour always inviting you to get social with us online that is tweet us and follow us on instagram at bronxnet tv or like us on facebook at open bronxnet television and of course don't forget while you're there follow moi on twitter fb instagram insta stories linkedin and snapchat at rina valentin our first guest is a fighter, empowering people in the same fight, yeah. A year and a half ago, she was diagnosed with leukemia, and like many, she lost a little bit of her confidence there, and through the process, she learned that cancer didn't define her, she defined herself. Very profound statement we're going to discuss later. Now, cancer-free, she's decided to create a cancer awareness fashion show to empower and encourage cancer survivors and those currently fighting the disease. Please welcome Surf Studio CEO and founder Erica Bennett. Hello and Hi. welcome. Hi, how are you? Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, I know that was a pretty long winded introduction, but I want to make sure that it's already set up. No, that people was... understand yeah. what, you're, what you've created from what you've gone through. That's a really profound statement. Yes. Yeah, let's was... talk a little bit about that. Yeah, it was, I was diagnosed with leukemia in 2017, and um, I built, so I was in remission, I went into remission last year, 2018. Going through the treatments and stuff like that, it, not only for myself, I met other patients that um, just didn't, just lost themselves, like, you know, physically, mentally, and emotionally, and, you know, think, like, you know, thank God for my strength that I had that I just like build that up back myself. And I just met so many people that didn't have that. And so what we're talking about is the sense of defeat or somewhat or feeling like, how could I let this happen? This sense of guilt of like, how could right. I let this happen? When meanwhile, it, you really have, you know, it no just choice. happened. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. right. And mm -hmm. so in then there's also that sense of shame, right? Because you don't want to share it with people and whatever that is, right? right. It was more so, you know, your physical appearance right. um, changes 360. And there's a lot of things you can't control due to the medication you're taking and just the lack of appetite and like the color of your skin and stuff like that. And um, it's a lot of things you have to just take in. And it was just hard for me, but I just learned to take that step, take that leap of faith, like, hey, let me, you know, let me change this about myself. You right, know, and I, so we simplify it with, with this uh, a, a term such as, oh, uh, losing confidence, really it's almost a loss of yourself because you're yes. not yourself. Right. Mm -hmm. And then how do you get back to yourself? 
Uh, the way I did it, it was, oh, it was trials and tribulations. It was so much that I had to go through. And I didn't do it without, like, therapy or anything like that. I'm not against it, but it was just more so, like, looking at myself in the mirror every day, having these conversations and, you know, having these quotes and, like, reading and just learning to find the strength. You don't have strength. You don't have energy, you know, and that just comes in with the lack of just confidence that you have. It's just the amount of energy you have to actually get pretty for the day or like do your hair. You're just like, I just want to feel better. Right. That's like your main focus, that's your main goal. And so, so you created this company, right? I know the company itself serves in, in various fashions, but I know that your primary cause is to create events that serve a, a grander purpose. Yes. And so this particular one is uh, geared towards cancer. Yes. And I understand that you have cancer patients and or survivors who are participants within the fashion show as fashion designers as well as models. So let's talk about that. Yes. So I built this. So the company wasn't even supposed to happen. I was just going to build this fashion show because I was like so focused on like this is what I want to give back. You know, as fighting, I was like, this is what I want to give back. And with my partner, I, we end up just, hey, let's build a company that just gives back entirely. Like, let's just, don't let this be the fashion show. Let's just continue and keep pushing and stuff like that. So I build this fashion show. It's broken down into two collections, one for skin cancer and one for leukemia and lymphoma. And um, the designers that I chose, they were upcoming designers in New York City. And they build these collections to just build they build it around the confidence of how women should feel de um, dealing with these diseases. And, and just stuff. for clarification purposes, what she's referencing is the, the designs are inspired by right. these right. particular uh, yes. symptoms of cancer, right? Yes. Or I don't even know what that term <laughs> is. Uh, however, no, because you said skin cancer. It's like, no, this is not about like cream or anything no, like no, that. No, no, this no, no. This is about fashion yeah. and wardrobe that kind of represents it in yes. some sort. Yes, Right? So the collections are broken down into uh, three colorways. Uh, the skin cancer is black, just because the ribbon is black. And then we have the leukemia and lymphoma, which is orange and red and stuff like that. We kind of just like fall in. And um, they are loud pieces. The pieces do, will bring in confidence. Like w the designers, you know, made it specifically for these women to feel like, hey, I am the most important thing in this room and I'm gonna walk this runway like I am. And then hopefully when they walk that runway, they just, it just sparks a confidence for a lifetime. Like, hey, I am the woman I need to be and I'm gonna continue fighting and I'm gonna just push forward. Or I did fight and I didn't have this confidence back after I finished, so I, I have it now. So that's was, you know, a lot of, that's like the main purpose that's of this show. That's the motivation behind yeah. it. It's lovely, it's yeah. lovely. I can sense it's gonna be a fabulous yes, evening. So let's be. share with everyone where they can uh, participate. Yes, so everyone you can participate, it's at surfstudios.com. Um, we have started a donation link to help us like help do the production for the show. You can buy your tickets. It's 50% of the ticket sales will be donated to a patient fighting at the moment. Um, so they can like go travel, pay for their medical bills, do anything that they would like with the money. Um, I know this would help them in so many different ways. So that's why we decided to also give these women a confidence and also give back in this way. And the show will be on August 18th. It's going to be in New York City, Midtown. Um, the, all the information is there, like the specific address and stuff like that. You can definitely buy your tickets. Also follow us on Surf Studios, um, at, on Instagram, and on Facebook as well. Awesome. Yeah. Here's to living purposefully, Thank you Erica. so much. Thank it was so, it's such a pleasure being here. Our pleasure to have you. Thank you. Glad to share your work with our viewers. Thank you so Thank much. You. All right, you guys, once again, the Serve Cancer Awareness Fashion Show is taking place on Sunday, August 18th at 470 7th Avenue, starting at 7 p.m. And for more information, you can visit servestudios.com. We have to take a quick break, but when we return, we'll find out about a dance workshop right here in the Bronx. You don't want to miss. Don't go anywhere.
back to Open Everyone. This month, the Ready Dance Company is holding its annual dance workshop, providing students ages 13 through 18 the chance to express themselves through dance. And the purpose of the workshop is to give young people in the Bronx the tools needed to speak their own personal and social truth. And joining us to tell us more, we welcome Dance Bridge Workshop Director, Facilitator, and Ready Dance Company Artistic Director, Beverly Lopez. Hello and welcome. Hello. <laughs> so it seems today is going to be a day, or th uh, the show itself is going to have this theme of just affirming life and finding different modalities in which to do so. Mm -hmm. And so, as you heard, we just did a fashion show. We just yeah. had a segment on fashion show. And you are working with the next generation in teaching them ways to pretty much just find their own voice within themselves and trust themselves. Yeah. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about your process and what inspired you to even create this, because this just went into effect last year, right? Oh, yeah. Um, we started up spring of 2018. Um, it originally began for the very first time, 2015. Um, and the idea came from um, this longing that I had to create and to choreograph. But being someone who was just new to dance, I didn't feel like I had the right to. Um, and as years went by, I started to understand that we have all that we need to create in the moment. Um, and that goes the same for high schoolers who are just learning dance or maybe who have been dancing for a little bit but feel a little nervous. You have everything you need to create and choreograph and present work. Um, and Dance Bridge is an incubator that allows you to take that work seriously. Um, it's a week for you to just dedicate to the art of creating. Um, and many mediums are involved in that poetry music dance theater so those who are not necessarily interested in dance so much they can really feel like they still belong regardless so in essence it's it's a workshop of performance art mm -hmm. right and the reason I had mentioned the affirmation aspect of it, because you just addressed it yourself personally. You mm -hmm. said, you know, I was kind of new to dance, and I didn't feel a certain way because, and so there's the choreography of dance, mm -hmm. and then there's the creation of dance, mm -hmm. and the trust of, that mm -hmm. your movement is expressing the language that you're speaking. Yeah. And we so, believe in effective storytelling mm -hmm. because many spaces students get the chance to like put dances together but what does it mean to effectively tell your story and what are the skills we can give you to really make you feel like when you told your story you did it in a way that you feel accomplished and you did it in the way that you feel like it really resonated with the audience or at least if you found a way to connect with the audience. Not necessarily please the audience, not so much. Right, yeah. right, because it's a dialogue. Yeah. There's a dialogue and so what should one expect within this week uh, yeah. from day one? So the, I like to think of it as two parts. Um, the day is from 10 a.m. until 2 p.m. And you can think of the morning being as an opportunity for those who are 12 until 18 years old to get to 19 years old to get the opportunity to take classes. Uh, we have Afrobeats class. We have house class as well as modern dance class, contemporary class, and we have body conditioning. So the morning is really for you to just learn new skills, um, learn a new technique, get challenged, um, be exposed to like different styles. And then the second half of the day will be dedicated to you creating um, work. We give writing prompts, um, we have theater um, games, we have writing assignments, as well as we expose them to some poetry so that they can then generate choreography based on the fun activities that we do. So who are your instructors uh, instructors this year? So for Afro Beats, we have Marcel March. Uh, for Modern Dance, we have Leah Tubbs. Um, for Body Conditioning, we have um, Idania Quesada. And we also have um, Doran Mowgli, Teaching House. So those forms, um, these are NYC professionals that come and they are a guest and they are really part of the community and it really makes it like home to me and to those who join. I love that you're I implementing house as a genre. Oh, yeah. Yes. That's what, how I choreograph. Yeah, anyway. Awesome. <laughs> Woo, sounds yeah. exciting. So, all right. So, again, uh, the capacity of this class and are there still openings for this class? Oh, yeah. We still have uh, slots available. Luckily, we, are, we will be at Lehman College. The workshop takes place August um, 19th until the 23rd for five days, and it's going to be happening at Lehman College. And so we have a big, big studio space, so we, are, we have so many slots available. Um, and you can apply by going to beverlylopez.com and reaching out to dancebridgeworks at gmail.com, or you can visit us at Facebook at 
readydance.com or Instagram at readydance.com. Aside from the age, is there a qualification? Do they have to have some kind of dance experience or no, any? No, we just ask, like, all levels are welcome, but as a part of the application process, we ask, why are you interested? What do you seek to gain from the program? So that we can get to know students a little bit better prior to them entering so we can serve them best. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, thank you for passing it forward, yeah, Beverly, and you. for affirming the next generation yeah. into communicating more effectively. <laughs> yes. Thank you. All right, you guys, <laughs> once again, the Dance Bridge Workshop will take place from August 19th through August 23rd on Lehman College campus, which is located at 250 Bedford Park Boulevard. And to sign up for the workshops, please be sure to visit beverlylopez.com slash dance dot dash bridge dot dash workshop so that's beverlylopez.com slash dance dot dash bridge dash workshop <laughs> all right we have to take a quick break for when we return we'll hear about the most anticipated film festival of the season don't go anywhere we are together and for the last 20 years we have been building on a vision to share our views, our voices, on our channels. We are the Bronx. We are BronxNet. Welcome back to Open, everyone. You know, I always invite you to get social with us. That's right. Tweet us at BronxNet TV. And while you're there, tweet me too at Rina Valentin. So the New York Latino Film Festival presented by HBO is celebrating its 16th anniversary with more than 83 films representing 10 countries spanning all genres, including documentaries and web series for people to enjoy. And the film festival provides the Latino community a platform to showcase their talent and creativity. Let's take a look at this year's festival trailer, This Is Me. This is me con caras lindas, right? Joining us to tell us more, we welcome New York Latino Film Festival founder, Calixto Chinchilla, and Palante Film Director, Christian Mercado. Hello, welcome. Hey, how are Calixto. you? Calixto. Good to be back. Señor Palante, <laughs> congratulations. Thank you. thank you, thank you. Oh my gosh, 16 years. Yeah. Making that's a difference crazy. for our community. Yeah. Oh my gosh, you saw all those beautiful faces, all those different colors. Yeah, that it's, is what it's, it's really about. Exciting. You know, well, you know, this year for the commercial, you know, we actually uh, went on Instagram looking for um, directors and photographers, and literally we crewed up that entire commercial on IG. And really it's trying to get other people an opportunity to kind of work with us and really build out the commercial. So we had our own ideas, and then it was like, well, how do we get other people's ideas and kind of create the spot? So literally the guy who um, did all the photography, 21, 21 year old kid from the oh, wow. the director from Jersey. None of us knew each other. And then we kind of just, you know, got the concept tighter. And then you have the spot. And I was in theaters. So, yeah. It's kind of like soothing, you know, and smooth. And of course, attracting the next generation, which is what you want to do. And I applaud yeah. you for that because, you know, they need us to help them expand on whatever it is that they already have yeah because they're living in a digitized world and they just need the platforms to be showcased yeah and also you know i don't think you want to be 
so uh, the obvious when it comes to like marketing a film festival or whatever. So for us, we knew that we wanted to do like a throwback to summer, a throwback to when, you know, culture is everything now, but even then, like from hip hop to just diversity, really just celebrating all right, of that. Right, because there's diversity within the Latino yeah. community as well. All right, so let's talk about that diversity and the films, right? I want to just get to know Christian oh, a little yeah. bit. Yeah, Christian! Hey, ah, what Christian up? Mercado! What's good? Oh, Mr. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Oh here, my gosh, I absolutely love Appreciate your film. It. Thank you. Love your film. Means I'm announcing it. Oh my gosh. I, I mean, <laughs> well, you know, of course, from a personal perspective, yeah. and the visuals that you captured yeah. uh, were a little heartbreaking. Absolutely. However, we've come uh, quite Quite a way. I'm not going to say a long way, but we've come well, quite a way. There's still, you know, road road to pave for sure. Yeah, definitely. So I understand that you jumped right in there and started filming this, like immediately yeah. after the first yeah. Maria. Yeah, it's really difficult to talk about sometimes, just because my family was so directly affected by the hurricane. You know, so like most of my family lives in Puerto Rico. Only like my immediate family's in New York. You know, very New Yorkian style. You know, so there's always that relationship between New York and Puerto Rico, and you know, that's a, that's a that's just a in, in the Puerto Rican and New York experience, you know? That's what I love about the film uh, is that you kind of like swerve in and out. Totally. And you use the, la, the of course, the Puerto Rican folklore culture. Absolutely. But yet yeah. you've got this, what is that sound of the music? Um, I, I want to say it's like, a, is it Americana? Because yeah. it sounded like all alternative. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Right? Alinda Segarra, the singer, is actually of Puerto Rican descent. And she has like a, but you know, like Puerto Ricans are part of the American canon, you know? Like I think a lot of people want to, Oftentimes, with when it comes to Latinos and you know our stories, they want to separate us from the American canon. But it's important to remember that we've been here for a long time. You know what I mean? Like Puerto Rico has been Puerto Rico. You know what I mean? Like that right. island has been there before the Americas. You know what I mean? Right. And our identity and our culture has been there before it has been. You know, other things have been imposed, or other narratives has been imposed. So, you know. I, that's how I feel about no, it. No, it's great. No, what's yeah. great is that you're doing it in a creative manner. Thank you. Right, I you're not just that. banging it over people's heads. Oh you're no, kind of totally. Like, hey, yeah, check like, this out. Yeah, yeah like our story way. is important too. And, and I want to say, well, our, our story is very important. If I may say so myself, yeah. <laughs> Calixto, what I appreciate about you and what your your team is doing is the the style of films that in which you're choosing. All right, so let's talk a little bit about that because we, Christian is one of like the main short films, right? Yeah. And then you have the feature that uh, features, um, that stars Martin Sheen, right? Martin Sheen? Yeah, so well, well, his film, you know, by the way, won South by Southwest. So that was like an amazing big festival. Thank you. Uh, that <laughs> one. So he's not giving him self credit, but he's been in like some of, the, some of the major festivals, which is really important. So um, but with Thank us, you. you know, we're opening with this film called Princess of the Row. Um, so it's, it's literally about this girl who's living on Skid Row because her father suffers from PSD syndrome and doesn't quite know how to take care of her. And so Latino family kind of takes her in. Um, but it's the struggle of like, I don't want to leave my father, yet my father can snap at me at any given moment. So that's going to be opening the festival. We're doing the 25th anniversary of I Like It Like That. So that's a, you know, Brock's favorite. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, you know, we're, to reunite the cast, we have most of them. Has been a, a Herculean effort because um, all of them are working, all of them are doing their thing. Oh my gosh, you're gonna get the whole cast to be for present the part. It's for, crazy. The, for the actual screening. Yeah. Oh my goodness, that yeah. was really exciting. You know, it's one of those. It's another historical first. You know, it's crazy because that film was the first film directed by an African American woman that was released by a studio, that was financed by a studio. That's only 25 years ago. Wow. And yet. Not much has changed, unfortunately. Yeah. And so the fact that she took this film, she grew up in the Bronx, and made a film that not only talked about the Puerto Rican experience, the Afro-Latino experience, but you know has transgenders in it, and it talks about Me Too, it talks about all these things back then that now we're having the conversation now, and she does it in a dramedy. It's crazy. Um, Faruko's coming to the festival. Um, so he's premiering his film there. We just announced that yesterday. Nice. So mm -hmm. that's going to be uh, crazy. And so all together, you've got 83 films. All together, 83, 83 films. 83, uh, as well as some documentaries, web series. All together. All together. Yeah. And so how do people get these passes? Navigate, uh, yeah. yeah. It's at nylatinofilmfestival.com. And there they can purchase, you know, all the passes, tickets, the different options. There's some free events. We actually have a whole digital conference with Google. This is our second time doing it with Google, uh, where it's like the top influences in the game. And literally, 
it's like kind of like peer to peer mentoring instead of like just the suits or whatever. It's like you're learning about, you know, how we're making in this business because, you know, as people of color, we don't own much, right? Mm -hmm. But yet we dominate in social media, we dominate mm -hmm. in mobile consumption and movie consumption. Yeah. So it's literally how we put ourselves together in the room because when we're in that room, that's where the money's at. There's power in those numbers. So we create those spaces you know, for that to happen. So we're going to do that up in Google. Right. It's free. And that's great. So get, get those tickets while it lasts. Yeah, uh, not yeah. only that, I just want to like, uh, just echo you in saying yeah. that it's important for all of us to understand that it's great to support each other on social media, but we got to show up. Yeah. yeah, we have to show up because that's yeah. how we're able to be supported yeah. by the major networks and or the the filmmakers. And while we love producing independently, it's nice to have some serious and, cash and, behind a project yeah. and show up and pay. Yeah. Also, right. You know, so while you get some free stuff, but you also mm. commerce, we have to keep our commerce in the community. We can't expect it for free. We can't expect yeah. whatever. The same thing that somebody else would charge us for. We also have to build commerce in our community, and so yeah. that's that's also important when it comes to events like this, but just in general. Right. Just no, just in general. If you want to honor, pay. Yeah. That's how you honor each other. Yeah. 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 You build yeah. with your dollars, basically. And you're supporting the filmmakers because at the yeah. end of the day, all of this content is to entertain you. All this content, they're really pouring out their, oh, yeah. their pockets there's, out. There's not really like to a, do that. There's not like film is a dialogue with audience, so you need audience, and you know they're part of that dialogue, so. You know, that's very important, definitely. Well, yeah. I, I thank you guys for coming here and thank sharing you. with us before the festival kicks off. We got the first scoop on it. Yes. Calixto, always a pleasure having thank you. you. Christian, thank you so much. Congratulations. I absolutely Appreciate love it. your film, and I hope people get out there to see it. The New York Latino Film Festival will take place from August 12th through the 18th. And for more information on how to navigate through the festival and for festival passes, please visit nylatinofilmfestival.com. So, on another note, Curly Girls throughout New York City came together for the 2019 Curl Fest at Randall's Island. Reporter Sanji Lopez attended the event. Let's take a look. Y'all, it's always a good time to be a Curly Girl, and this year is no exception as Curl Fest kicks off here at Randall's Island. Curly Girls came from all over the nation to enjoy Curl Fest in New York City. Established by a group of natural girlfriends who founded the Curly Girl Collective with the mission of making women with naturally textured hair feel beautiful, celebrated, and appreciated. When you just look through the crowd and you see so many people who look exactly like you but yet completely different than you, it's unexplainable. The repeat patterns of being able to see ourselves and our patterns is important. And the celebration came right in time as New York just became the second state to ban natural hair discrimination with the introduction and signing of the Crown Act. It finally puts a, 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 a pause and a stop to the discrimination that's innately tied to our ethnicity. We're the only people with this hair. It's clearly what it's about. And so um, we're grateful that New York and California have instituted this legislation. We know that it's going to take the country by storm, um, and it's the first step. Festival goers enjoyed many fun activities along with hair goodies, vendors, dance, art, panels, and even braiding. I was definitely feeling myself, and I wasn't alone. The next generation of women and girls who believe in the power behind being natural and feeling beautiful shared that same energy with me. It's all about unity. No matter what kind of hair you have, what kind of skin tone you have, it's all about just fun, celebration. You can be absolutely beautiful in the way that you're born, the way that your hair grows, the color of your skin, you know, you don't have to fit into social norms. In times when Curl Fest is a space where people from around the world converge, then it's definitely evidence that this is needed, and the reason why it's needed is because we should be included, right? And if you don't include us, we're going to make sure that we're included. We're going to create our own spaces. I couldn't leave without getting the Curly Girl Collective to do the Bronx X, and it turns out that three out of the five ladies are repping the Bronx, so it was only right. Bronx Net Curl Fest 2019! Woo! Reporting for Bronx Net, Sanji Lopez. Thank you, Sanji. Our next guest is a chef from Best Side Brooklyn that grew a love for cooking. He's a self-taught chef and has met, worked many restaurants, and currently he offers personal chef services and catering through his company, Savory Bites. And now he's here to make a unique, twisted version of a surf and turf 
please welcome Chef Caesar. All right. What we got here, Chef? All right. So, while we're doing this, I'm going to ask you questions, but you yeah. kick it off with your ingredients here. Okay. Surf and turf, yes. first thing on a Friday morning. Yes, yes. So what is your definition of a surf and turf? So traditionally, surf and turf is, people hear surf and turf, they think steak, lobster, shrimp, all this stuff. But it's the summertime, so you want something lighter and not so heavy. So what I have here is some codfish, which is what I'm going to stuff with some Spanish chorizo, some fresh herbs, and a cook it via sous vide with um, some cream of corn as well to uh, go with it. Oh my gosh, this sounds delicious. I'm yes. okay having this for breakfast. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so first we start with the salmon. Well, we this uh once again this is gonna be cod fillets. Oh, it's cod. Yeah, what, what, which well, I'm salmon. I'm like, <laughs> I got salmon in. You the can grain. do cod as well. Right. Um, so we're gonna pretty much cut this in half. We're gonna stuff it um with some chorizo. Okay, so. We're stuffing it with? Chorizo, Spanish Chor sausage, yes. Okay. And then you're just going to lightly season it. A little bit of kosher salt, um, some black pepper. And then what we're going to do is we're going to fold this up so it's not really visible. Ah. And then what you're going to do is since we're using a sous vide machine, we're going to cook it at 124 degrees Fahrenheit. And what we're going to do is put it in this bag here. And what is this machine called? A sous vide. Okay, and what exactly does it do? So pretty much it cooks any protein or vegetables at a steady temperature that is not aggressive. So it cooks it through, and then we're going to finish this product off on the grill to get a good sear and crust. All right. All right. So you have the fish, you get a little bit of oil, you fresh oil herbs. In the bag. Uh -huh. Correct. And then what you're going to do is you're just going to drop it in here, and it's going to kind of seal itself. And it's going to cook for 25 minutes. Okay. All right. And that's going to cook before the, sh the segment's over? Because we don't have 25 minutes. Well, guess what? I have some ready for us oh, right now. <laughs> Bam, man. All the right. magical television. Yay. So pretty much what we're going to do is I'm going to slide on over here. Mm -hmm. You don't mind me pushing you over a little bit? All right. What's this? So this is the finished product. So what we're going to do is we're going to get it on the hot plancha. I, I love how he's just into the gloves. You can tell you're a personal chef. <laughs> right, because, I mean, we're here no on No cross-contamination right? or nothing. Exactly. So you get a little good, little good olive oil on mm -hmm. there. All right. So you switch the gloves so that there is no cross-contamination. Very interesting. Yeah. That's a, another tip, for, by the way. Yes. <laughs> And so now this is semi cooked, right? It's pretty much it's, it's pretty cooked, much cooked it's fully. It's been boiling for twenty five minutes. Yeah, so it's so already when stuck. you put it on on the grill. So yeah, so now you just it's on a high grill. You're just gonna get a good sear on it. Uh, it cook, yeah, so. And that's to what? Make so you're just it a gonna, little crisp. A little crisp. We're gonna warm it back up, bring it up to temp, and then um, we're gonna work over here as well. Yeah, and for, you know, those who don't speak Ebonics, temp is temperature. Bring it up to temp. <laughs> Bring it up to temp. <laughs> um, so here we have the cream of corn soup, oh which is pretty goodness. much made with uh, coconut milk, corn, there's no dairy in it, some garlic and fresh herbs. I just want to show that to everybody. Yeah. This is cream of corn with uh, coconut, right? Coconut milk, coconut. some fresh garlic, some thyme, and uh, a little bit of... Uh, olive oil when it's sauteed, and then once it's sauteed, you put it in a blender and process it, and that's it. Nice. Simple, one, two, three. All right, so while this is warming up. This is, it is uh, somewhat simple for a fancy looking dish. Correct, yeah, and if you wanted to, like if you're cooking for a party of 10 or so, it's easy, you know, you can multitask. You can get about five or six fillets inside this bad boy here, cook for 20 minutes while you focus on the other garnishes for your dish. That's it, you bring everything together. Okay, right. and so we're ready to final it up here. Correct, so what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna pour this on the base. All right. All right. And then what I have here is some fresh uh, baby arugula. And since it's summertime, corn is in season and heirloom tomatoes are in season. So I'm just gonna mix these two together for a light salad. A little bit of fresh olive oil. All right. A little bit of kosher salt. Mm -hmm. And then once again, back to the gloves. Back to the gloves, right? <laughs> well, Which I don't is have great. any right Well, now. you're a personal chef, yeah. right? And so um, when you cater to your clients, you basically address whatever their eating habits are. Correct. And then you customize it with these fabulous looking dishes. Correct. You know, so we're just going to bring this around. Mm-hmm. On the dish around the edge. Also have some 
homemade okay. bread crumbs that I have here. It's okay. toast with some uh, fresh herbs, some paprika, and uh, some parsley. That's okay. It. So um, all of this that you've made is pretty much homemade, right? Correct. And so you are, uh, you also offer catering services. Correct. Right. So let's talk about that while this is uh, cooking up here. So pretty much I've started working out in a few ways from restaurants or whatever, and I wanted to brought in a platform for myself to showcase my talent. You know, when you work in most restaurants, you're kind of subdued to whatever that executive chef wants to be done. You're portraying his image through your talents. So, which is why I started Savory Bites, just to offer what I'm influencing uh, from what I grew up with. So, basically, I'm specializing in Southern and Latin cuisine because I grew up in Bushwick. Um, all the cuchifritos, you mm -hmm. know, the papas <laughs> rellenas, everything I love. Uh, yeah. And, uh, and I fuse it with, you know, the love of Southern cuisine through my grandmother. So between those two, I just try to come up with crazy concoctions, you know, that showcases both passions. I love yes, it. Yes. I, I, I can tell that you're into crazy concoctions. Yes. You know, you're an inspiration too because you're self-taught. Yes. And um, and you've come this far just creating, right? So you're an yes. artist in your own right through, of course, the culinary arts. You can arts. say so correct. Yes. 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 And I love that you're considering our, our palates, right? Yes. Because we have a certain flavor that we like. Yes. And usually when you eat healthy, you know, that's the primary factor. It's like, it must taste good. Yes. So no how do we what. make it taste like, you know, a cuchifrito knowing yes. that it's a healthy dish? We just cook with love. That's, That's it, man. It. Oh, just a little bit of that. love, man. Love That's the that. secret recipe. <laughs> Alright, so we have this here. So how did you come up with this, though? Like, this corn? It's, so based off my, my training working in restaurants, even though I'm self-taught, uh, we were taught that everything needs to be seasonal, and what's in season, the, the, the produce is going to be fresher. Of course, for certain people, the product is going to be also cheaper because it's seasonal, as opposed to you, you buying what you want to buy, it's to buy. Um, so summertime, everything is about bright, fresh herbs. Like we said, the fresh greens, corn is in season right I now. I just want to show everybody how yes. beautiful this dish looks without the fish. I don't know. Oh, um, I can't wait to taste it. You got it. So, this yeah. cream of corn that he made. What are, what are you calling this? So it's, it, I call it cream of corn, you pretty do much. Call it yes, cream but there's no dairy in it. Right. You know, for those that a lot of people don't eat dairy nowadays. But it's just pretty much once again, it's this fresh corn that you would just slightly grill, cut it off the cob, uh, get it in the pan with some onions, some garlic, some fresh herbs, and you're good to go once All you right. uh, puree it. Okay. So it are side. we ready to yeah. channelize yeah. this dish? It sure looks All like right. it. And then what we're going to do is... And then this is your homemade breadcrumbs? Correct. Just to give the dish and some texture. And what's in the breadcrumbs? So it's parsley, a little salt, a little pepper, and a little uh, paprika. So when you build dishes, we're taught also that, you know, you work off the three things of fat, salt, and acid. So you have, and texture as well. So we have some texture. You got some fat from the corn <laughs> and the acid would be from the olive oil and uh, tomatoes. Look how beautiful. You know? If only I had a fork. <laughs> <laughs> look how beautiful. Let's see. Oh my goodness. It's so beautiful. We're just going to look at it. All right. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. This yeah. is Chef Caesar, everyone. Yes. <laughs> and for you guys, for more on Savory Bites and Chef Caesar, please be sure to check them out on Instagram at Chef Caesar1022. Stay tuned. Bobby C's Weekly Sports Roundup is coming up next. Following a 7-5 victory against the Arizona Diamondbacks, Yankees general manager Brian Cashman and players reacted to the MLB trade deadline and the decision not to add any players. My job, obviously, is constantly trying to improve this club, and, and you know we're doing it for a long time. And um, you know, just in terms of the circumstance, we didn't get close to anything, um, but we certainly 
knocked on all doors, had a lot of ideas and exchange of ideas with clubs in our effort to improve. Um, but the fallback has always been we know we have a good club already. Um, and, uh, and, you know, the job is to obviously look under every rock to see if you can turn up something to add to what we already have. I think the talent in here to win the World Series is here. Guys that, you know, we need to pitch better, you know, hit better, play some better defense than we have the last few weeks. But when guys are playing to their potential in this room, you know, we're, we're good, really, really good um, with the personnel that we have. That's not including the guys on the IL that are going to come back and some big names that I've yet to see in the minors, but I've heard really good things about that could really help us. So, um, you know, we are who we are now, and uh, I think we're good enough to win a World Series with, with who we are. No, I mean, it's something that's out of our control. You know, obviously, if someone comes in, then one of our guys go out. So, you know, I we just go out and do what we need to do. You know, that's kind of the bottom line for us. We begin our look at sports on the baseball diamond. The Bronx Bombers welcome Boston to the stadium this weekend following last weekend's debacle. The Yanks are hoping for similar returns to their early season success against the Bo Sox where they had won six of seven games. Boston of course took the first three of four in Beantown before the pinstripers managed to win on Sunday night baseball last Sunday. The Mets meanwhile they travel to Pittsburgh following their series with the Chicago White Sox. The Pirates have struggled this year and should remain an easy target for the Amazons. Time for some quick hitters from around the world of sports. In MLS action, the New York Red Bulls will take on Toronto at 6 p.m. Saturday, while NYCFC will face Salt Lake City. That game gets underway at 10 p.m. Eastern time. In American football, the New York Giants are gearing up for their first preseason action. They will take on the Jets at MetLife Stadium next Thursday, August 8th. That's a 7 p.m. tip-off. On Monday, I'll give you my top 10 NFL preseason predictions. The New Orleans Saints are on that list, and this guy is a big reason why. The Saints have relied heavily on receiver Michael Thomas the past few years, and Thomas knew he had leverage. Thomas's training camp holdout didn't last very long. He got the extension he wanted, and it was a huge one. ESPN's Adam Schefter reported Wednesday morning that Thomas and the Saints had agreed on a five-year $100 million extension with $61 million guaranteed. That's the most guaranteed money for any non-quarterback offensive player in NFL history. With that, Drew Brees' top target will be back with the Saints. The Dallas Cowboys and running back Ezekiel Elliott have been in the headlines since NFL training camps began, but because of Elliott's contract status on Tuesday, they were in the headlines for a different reason. A Texas man filed a $20 million lawsuit against Elliott and the Cowboys, alleging that they covered up a 2017 car accident. Frisco, Texas resident Ronnie Hill filed that lawsuit seeking at least $20 million via the Dallas Morning News. Court documents say the Cowboys interfered with Frisco Police's investigation into a January 11th, 2017 car crash to make sure Elliott would miss Dallas's playoff game four days later. Really interesting sports story my friends, if that is true. I'm excited to see the New York football Giants take on the Washington Redskins this year, and a lot of that excitement centers around Landon Collins. The new Redskins safety isn't over his beef with Dave Gettleman, not even close. Collins, who spent his first four years in the league playing for Gettleman and those New York football giants, has been very public about his dislike for his former general manager. The 25-year-old will go head-to-head -head with Gettleman twice this season after landing in D.C. They'll travel to the Giants in week four and then host New York in late December. He gets the comment of the week. Collins said he'd like to run Gettleman over on the field. LeBron James received some critical comments this week for being amped up at his son's AAU games. The all-time great had some sideline antics and layup line dunks. Pretty unfair, just my take. Side note here, Bronny's still just 14 years old. He hasn't even had time to spend a day in, as a high school student yet. And he's been on Instagram for just two months, and he already has nearly 3 million followers. Top NBA draft pick Zion Williamson has 4 million. That kind of fame as the son of the greatest to ever play, perhaps. 
means that everyone is going to expect Junior to follow in those same footsteps as one of the best in the NBA. In hockey, the New Jersey Devils continue to make big off-season moves. The Devils acquired left wing Nikita Gusev from the Vegas Golden Knights and signed him to a two-year contract with an average annual salary of $4.5 million. The Devils sent a 2020 third-round draft pick and a 2021 second-round pick to Vegas in the deal that was announced on Monday. The 27-year-old Gusev has spent his entire professional career in the Russian Hockey League. He is a four-time KHL All-Star who had 17 goals and 65 assists this past season. He has 119 goals and 219 assists and 391 career games. That's a steal. The Golden Knights acquired Gusev from Tampa Bay during the 2017 expansion draft for a pair of draft picks. He joined Vegas for the 2019 playoffs, but did not play. We hit the C-list for Dame time and a Dame time wish that I just don't see happening. It was a sad week for a pair of former New York Knicks. Jeremy, Jeremy Lin was emotional about his struggles in free agency after winning an NBA championship with Toronto this past offseason. He was in tears about not being able to find an NBA job. It's looking more and more like Jay Lin will sign up to play overseas. I think it's possible the 30-year-old makes it back to the NBA this year. I can't say the same about Carmelo Anthony even if NBA All-Star Damian Lillard is going to bat for him. The Portland Trailblazers guard wants Melo to get to the NBA and get the send-off that he feels he deserves. Lillard tried to start a movement on Twitter on Monday suggesting Anthony should be signed and given that farewell tour. The 35-year-old Anthony remains unsigned after playing in just 10 games with the Houston Rockets. Last season, Anthony wasn't a great fit in Houston, of course, and the team wound up parting ways with Anthony in November. Anthony was eventually traded to the Chicago Bulls, who had no interest in playing him at all. While Lillard doesn't think that's acceptable and an acceptable ending for one of the best players of the era, he doesn't think the Trailblazers can bring Anthony in either, of course. As for Anthony, he's hoping he will get another shot at the NBA, according to his trainer. There hasn't been much buzz about Anthony just yet. Melo signed with the Rockets for the veterans minimum last season. Sadly, I think it's time for Melo to go and play in the big three. His bestie in L.A., LeBron James, hasn't gotten the Lakers to pull the trigger. And even Dame Time, despite his wishes in social media, can't get Portland to give Melo a deal. Who knows, maybe the Knicks give him a reunion tour, or perhaps the New York Mets will go out and get him, just because it wouldn't make any sense at all. That's your look at sports. I'm Bobby C. Stay with us. We'll be right back after this. <laughs> Think getting dumped by text is harsh? Try getting dumped by tennis ball. My ex owner drove me out to the woods, yelled fetch, and by the time I bought the ball back, he was gone. Yeah, I was pissed. <laughs> but the folks at the shelter helped me let go of my anger. I learned coping skills, like taking it to the hole. Boom! Now I'm ready to fetch again. But how about I throw and you run and get it? Welcome back. It's now time for this week's Open Artist Spotlight. This week's Open Artist Spotlight features a synth-pop duo from the Bronx that have a unique sound inspired by the 80s. Their musical influence includes Tears for Fears, Michael Jackson, Prince, Depeche Mode, and Parliament's Funkadelics, and that's just to name a few. Here now to perform their new single, Time Traveling. Please welcome Five Alive. <laughs> Suggestion. 
On the run, be quick on your feet, you've got to move. Get on the groove, get into the beat where the street lights are flashing. It's the time of your life, just follow the crowd straight into the night. You've got to be everything you want to, baby. Let it take you to the top. Traveling, let us take you to the top. Time traveling, leave it all. It's in the past, we're moving straight into the future No time to make it last, where the channels are blank But the levels are high, hear the calls in the distance e bombs fall from the sky, you gotta see Everything around you, baby Let us take you to the top Time traveling let us take you to the top Time traveling Time traveling me back to my days <laughs> yes even though i live in denial <laughs> bravo gentlemen bravo bravo so i'm gonna need you to speak into the microphones and i just want to share with everyone right the beauty of what we do here in our open artist spotlight especially myself personally i love discovering new talent and i understand you guys started all of this in an apartment yeah yeah we started in an apartment off of tremont and um and just a living room and um it started off as just he brought over some new equipment that he had purchased. And he was yeah. like, "Yo, Frank, I want I want you to test this out." <laughs> and I'm a huge lover of synth pop. He always has to hear everything for a second. Like if I get something, he has to hear. It. Yeah, <laughs> he, he really, you know, he's an enthusiast of you know music technology, and so am I. So I'm testing it out, you know, and we end up making this patch. It's like, a patch is like a small scene in a when you're recording music, you can make a beat just simply like that. And he was like. Yo, I like the way that sounds. We should b build off of it, and we end up building this song. And um, my fiance sang on it, and we kind of created this like ethereal esque song that just resembled, you know, the '80s kind of. Well, I, I wanted to, I wanted it to feel like you were like in a DeLorean, like taking a time travel like back to that era, and just like something fresh and you know not corny. And Hence <laughs> the title being appropriate. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, he definitely took me back in time. I right. was back there grooving it. And by the way, your song was a hit at our BronxNet luncheon. Wow. Uh, yeah, Sanji oh, put you. it on for us. Sanji, one of the producers here at BronxNet, she played it for us, and that's how you're here. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's cool. Well, we're working on an album. We just this was our first single, and then we released another single, which we're gonna probably play or demo in a couple of seconds. Um, we're working on an album with musicians that we work with all over New York City, you know, and it's it's really awesome. It was kind of bringing uh, the community together because, you know, the, the Bronx has so much art to offer to the world, and this is where it starts, I guess. I think it's there's room for everything. Yes. I think there's room for everything. And uh, 
Daquan. 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 Yeah. Yes, but I must say, like, uh, this this was more so of us doing music that we felt free creating. Mm-hmm. And um, that's how, like, this wanted to come together. Like, like I said, bringing, like he said, bringing the equipment and actually coming to his house and trying things out and just being like, hey, we love this music that they created them. And let's hey, let's on. just share it with yeah. everybody. And yeah. I understand you have a new release coming out in September. Yes, we're, we're coming out with an album. I can't give you a date right now because we're, like, really trying to just give it the best we have. You know, we're work, like I said, we're working with a bunch of Bronx artists, even Queens artists, like, you know, and... You know, it's crazy. We came together as two different types of musicians. Like he, he's yeah. initially a hip hop, a hip hop artist, Rapper. and I'm a, a blues guitarist in a couple of bands. Yeah, I'm a musician just from New York City. And let's see what the Bronx did. Yeah, <laughs> that's what, uh, hey, that's you what. Know, that's what I love it. fusion. Yeah. Yes. Eso mismo. Yeah. And that's what we're all about, right? Yeah, we are the melting pot. We are the yes, melting pot capital. Absolutely. So good for you bringing yeah. it together. All right, you guys, once again, thank you for being here on our set. Thank you. I just want to let everybody know that Five Live Music can be found on musical platforms such as Spotify and Apple Music. And be sure to follow them on Instagram at Five exclamation point alive underscore nyc that is our show today mi gente thanks to all our guests for coming through and to you our viewers for tuning in if you missed any part of the show you can check out the recable cast tonight in 24 hours a day at bronxnet.tv i'm rena valentin and from all of us here at open may the universe provide paz prosperity and amor can you play for me sure all right we're gonna close out with five alive let's do it let's do it you guys having fun